Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a little different than what I normally do. Yesterday it came to my attention, a couple different people sent me a message on Instagram letting me know that one of my uh, Instagram posts was screenshotted by somebody and put up on a Facebook group and then a discussion slash, I guess you can't, I guess you can kind of call it a discussion, but there's a little bit of bashing in there, um, which is just, I find interesting. So I applied to be part of this group because I thought, you know, I want to see this firsthand, right? And I, I, I actually asked for under my page name, which is Vandy's Closet, not under my actual name, which is Melissa Vandridge. I just wanted to see if they'd even accept me. Well, they did. I'm not sure if they put two and two together or even kind of understood that this was there. And I, at first I was going to reply directly to these people. And then I thought better about it. I don't think that would solve anything to be perfectly honest. I instead thought this was a good opportunity to show you how much misinformation is still out there and how people view thread up. And there's some other things in there that I thought was really funny. Like, a, a small conspiracy theory about me. Really? Okay. So, I'm going to show them right here. Right here somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. Right now, you just see a placeholder for it. And I'm going to read the... I'm going to read the comments. So, if you're just listening to this, that's fine. You don't have to look at anything. I will read them to you. Uh, reading out loud is not my strong point, so I will stumble over my words. I guarantee it. I'll try not to. Okay, so... It first starts out with this. This is the first part of it. So, like I said, I redacted her name. I redacted, and it's all women. I redacted her name and I redact, redacted her picture because I don't condone bullying myself. I wouldn't want to bully them. I don't like to be bullied, but I'm not going to bully somebody else for their point of view, regardless of what it is. Um, but I thought it's fair enough. It's about me. And what I'm doing so this person says I haven't sent in much thread up just small brand clothes but this seller I follow on Instagram is giving me new ideas she orders designer boxes and sends them back as a luxe box and makes a lot of profit I don't have a clue about designer high-end brands and I'm afraid to invest too much into them because all the fakes going around but this seems like a safe way to get quality brands from a reliable source. I wonder if they, if I can use my credit from puzzles I made in the, to buy the designer boxes. We'll see. Is any, is anybody else doing what the seller does? Well, I didn't know about the puzzles, so thank you for alerting me to that, and I will start that myself, and then it'll be explained later on. Um, so this is the first time I've sent, I've got something from them like, uh. This is the first designer DIY. Well, it's not DIY. This is the first time I've got a designer box from them and then sent it all back. Except for the long chomp bag. I did not send that back because I actually think that's fake. And so I'm just gonna keep that because it's a it's a cool, it's a it's a cute bag anyway. So I'm just gonna use it for my own personal use. And um but I'm not gonna try to resell that. Even if I stop using it, i I will probably destroy it because it's fake. Um and I don't sell that kind of stuff. No one should sell fakes. We know that. So I'm going to address a few things in there. So um, I don't know if I'm going to make a lot of profit off that box. I hope I do. And I think the best possible way, um, and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I recently bought a $300 box of 15 items from Bread Up, And it was one of their rescue boxes, but it wasn't a DIY box. It was, um, I mean, none of my items were flawed. Okay, there's one item the Jimmy Choo shoes that has like a little gouge on the heel but I feel like I put a little permanent marker in there to kind of fill it in to make it look less glaringly obvious um you can still tell that there's a gouge there but it's darker than the pure white that's underneath of it because the wedge is actually made of plastic in these shoes who knew that Jimmy Choo used plastic in their shoes <laughs> probably a lot of people but anyway um so I did that and I sent it all back. Now I don't know if all these items are going to be accepted. Now I think the vast majority of them will be accepted. Um, I have a pretty good acceptance rate, about 80%. I'm not sure about those Jimmy Choo shoes. They actually might get rejected and sent back to me, which is fine. So this is an experiment that I've decided to do. Okay. 
So and this is the bottom of this picture is just, I'm not showing it to you, it's just my post that I put on Instagram. And if you want to see my post, I it's still there. I'm not going to archive it. Um, so feel free to go over to my Instagram, which is, you can get there from somewhere around here, probably in the show notes. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go to the next one. Sorry if this is a little, a little clunky. So the first comment under this, of course, mmm, doubtful. If Thread of could have sold it, they would have already. Not true. Not true at all. So Thread Up, we when they make these rescue boxes, there's a lot we don't know about them. We don't know how long they have been off their site, if they just pulled them off their site, or they've been off their site for a long time, and they've just been held in their warehouse, and they are just trying to offload them, because their warehouse have a finite amount of space, right? And you don't want, you don't want them to have bad storing practices, which arguably they might already, but even worse than they do, um, because they can't sell this stuff, they need to get it out so they can accept more items in, right? Well, I send them items all the time, and if my items don't sell, I reclaim them and I resend them back to them. A lot of people do that. That's a very common practice. Um, it's also very common practice for people to buy items off Thread Up or The Real Real or Poshmark or eBay or fill in the blank and send it into Thread Up because Thread Up garners a higher price for a lot of items. A lot of items sell for much higher there than they do on any other platform. Or they might sell for the same as any other platform. So at that point, I still send it in thread up because why would I do all that work to get this same result when I can just send it in thread up? They will get me that same result and I did less work. Work smarter, not harder. Anyway, let's go on to the rest of this comment in this little block. Uh, the next person says, not true. Depends on, on who is going through your stuff. That is true. I've sent stuff in with return insurance. And I highly recommend that if you're doing a standard label, Lux label is built in, but for standard it's not, so you have to opt into it. But I do not do the expedited shipping, or not shipping the expedited uh, processing. Uh, what they didn't take, they mailed back to me, and I resent it. And 24 hours later, and it was taken. I keep sending it back until they until they take it, and I do the same thing. That's a common practice. Send it back in. Now I re look over my item when it gets rejected the first time. Did I miss armpit stains? Did I miss uh, a period stain? Did I miss, because that's a real thing, <laughs> did I miss, you know, a hem out? Did I miss a tear or a flaw that I just missed originally? It happens, it happens to the best of us. No one's perfect. And if you think you're perfect, you are 100% wrong. Let's go on. Um, the next person said, yes, this too. Yes, this too. And if, per if the person didn't pay for the rest, I think she meant return insurance, they go to the rescues which true if you don't pay for return insurance and you do a standard label and you send in your items and they don't accept them they keep it and it's in their terms of service oh also i'm going to link their terms of service and their seller rules in the th th the show notes and that will be relevant later on okay so and the next person said people do it successfully all the time and this person i recognize her picture she follows me on instagram and so she knows she knows what she's talking about because she sees me do it and she sees probably other people do it i'm not the only one that sells to th th sells on thread up let's get that correct here that'll be relevant later on as well because people don't understand how this actually works which is so funny the next person so she orders them from thread up as a designer box and then sends them back to thread up as a luxe box how does that even work why would they have been sold as a Lux box to be, why wouldn't they have been sold as a Lux box to begin with? I'm not familiar with ThreadUp at all, so trying to figure this out. Fair enough, it's complicated. It takes a minute to understand it. I took a course, to be perfectly honest. I bought a course for $100 from Chriselle. Her name is Kringle on um, Thread, uh, not Thread, on uh, Instagram. And I would never have tried it had I not taken her course. I had, when I tried to look up, I was thrown up a great place to sell. There's so much misinformation out there. There's so much garbage on the internet about how bad of a marketplace it is, how you only get pennies. And that's garbage. It really is. It's information that's not true. And I'll tell you why it's not true later on. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know it's not true. Okay, so uh, the way this works, and someone breaks it down later on, and we'll get to that, but 
it's interesting. <sighs> okay, so these rescue boxes are their surplus. They own these items. They're not, you know, people either abandoned them and they didn't, you know, didn't reclaim them at the end of their time, which I think that happens a lot. People send in a Lux box, they don't monitor it, they don't raise their prices, and it expires, and ThreadUp owns all your, owns everything if it doesn't sell. Now here's, um, no, I'm gonna get into this other part later, but anyway, so this person clearly just doesn't understand how this works. And the next person says, and why the heck would you tag Thread Up to let them know you're doing this? Not you, but them, meaning me. Because I tagged Thread Up in my post. Why not? Why is that a bad thing? Um, Thread Up knows people do this. Um, it's not new to them. Plus, they win twice. So if you buy something from Thread Up, they get money, right? So when I bought this $300 box, I paid Thread Up for that box. Here's how buying works. I buy something from ThreadUp, it becomes my property because I gave them legal tender for it. Therefore, I own these items. Now, I can do whatever I want with these items. I can sell them, I can wear them, I can give them away. I can deface them, I can do whatever I like. I can fill them with jello. I know, random, but I can do whatever. I put them in a Lux box, and now people get confused about Lux box. All it is is a regular box. It's not a special box. It just has a Lux label on it. But people call them Lux boxes because it's just what we've been calling it. But it confuses people. It's a Lux label. The Lux label you have to specifically request from ThreadUp. It's not one you can download and print on your own like you can a standard label. You have to ask for it either from the support, which I don't recommend, or from the Lux concierge, which I do uh, recommend and it's Lux Concierge at threadup.com. Okay, so all together. And you can request a label and they give it, send you a label in the mail, one in one envelope. It's really kind of ridiculous the way they do that part. I don't like it, but it's how they do it. At last, we have to go by that, right? So the next person says, I was thinking the exact same thing. I don't understand why they think this is a problem. This is just how buying works. Um, and then the next person says, this doesn't make much sense to me. Well, I mean, you can try to educate yourself. I don't understand what is happening is <laughs> the next person. <laughs> These just, I think they're funny, honestly. Okay. So next, next slide. The next person said, uh, I, I have said to thread up are on the site for 60 to 90 days. If they don't sell and the seller doesn't reclaim the items, uh, they can end up in these boxes. So they are items that ThreadUp would accept and or sell. I'm excited to see how she does with this. Thank you. Uh, the next person said, me too. I am giving it a good shot. I buy stuff at cheap at thrift stores, me too, and take it to an upscale store and make money back plus way more. Cool. That works for some people. That just doesn't garner enough money for me. Um, I checked into doing that with like Plato's Closet and I make far more sending it in thread up. So I will continue to do that. Um, next person, if she is doing the new $300 designer rescue box, she is, she got very lucky to get a good box that can be resold. That's not true. I watched a few of these and uh, majority of the people that I've watched, they got good items that can be resold. I mean, they got more than $300 worth of items that can be resold. So I, I wonder how many she saw. I mean, to be perfectly honest, but I saw a bit. Um, I mean, like Tyler got like two Chloe dresses and I think those are worth probably more than what I got. The Chloe's dresses, if, especially if they, he got a sought after one. Um, yeah, those go for some bucks. I've never found Chloe. Anyway, and honestly, I do not know much about designer. I mean, I don't. That's why I'm sending this back because a they they have a better time selling it than I would. Um, yeah, so that's partially why I'm sending it back because my store does not really sell designer. I sold a Gucci bag, but it was it was vintage, and I sold for 150. It was great, but you know, I'm not like the posh kings. I mean, they sell they sell designer. They're good at it. Right, and I guess I could be good at it overall, but that's just not something that I have an interest in uh, doing. I have an interest in selling them, absolutely, but not 
myself necessarily. So send them off to them and then, and plus, you know, if I get purses, I'm going to send them to them because they're final sale. I don't have to deal with returns at all, which is great because they're, they can't be returned on thread up, not for purses. Um, I was really, okay. So she said, I was really tempted to get one, but wanted to wait to reviews. I'm glad I did. There are a couple YouTube videos reviews I've I've seen on Instagram so far and they've all been underwhelming with multiple damage unsellable items I don't think this person actually saw my video or uh, some of the videos that I saw so I mean to each their own if you feel it's too much risk you know fair enough that is fair um, these are a risk and I will not sugarcoat that it's like mystery boxes are always a risk but this was a risk I was willing to take I'm a risk taker I like taking risks and that's why I did this and I was hoping it panned out and I was lucky I got lucky and she's right I did get lucky to get some of the things I got um, but it, it wasn't like I was the only one that got good things I just want to put that out there um, I watched oh this person says I watched her video last night she got a $300 designer box from Thread up and is sending it as a Lux to them it made no sense well I you know I think I try to explain things pretty well in my videos but um, you know you can't you can't explain it well enough for everyone you just can't so I tried it didn't work but let's see I mean you follow me on Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram because that's where I, I post my thread up solds then you'll get to see if I, if I sold anything but it's already out there like I sent it Friday to thread up okay the less people that understand the better <laughs> which is kind of funny but I feel I don't agree with that I feel that there's enough room for all of us, you know, because people do eBay, people do Amazon, people do, um, you know, more. Other, I'm not the only one doing Thread Up. Uh, people do Macari. I mean, there's so many marketplaces out there, and, and I'm not even listing the majority of them. There's so many more out there that I'm even listing. I'm just listing the ones that are the most well known. And it's like, I don't understand why people always have this mentality, especially like even when people put out videos about eBay and Amazon and and Poshmark. Oh, if you tell everyone your secret, everyone will know and therefore everyone will do it and therefore uh, and we won't make any more money. But that's never ever true because people don't believe people. People are very skeptical and it's interesting the way the human psyche works and um you know yeah a portion of people that i uh, that uh, in my audience will listen to me not all of them but a portion of them will but they're better off for doing it honestly so and then the next person the savagism <laughs> i learned a lot from her thanks i'm glad you're learning something and the next person um said oh but they said to chelsea ooh, i almost said their name they said to that first person, yup, and they used Pam from The Office, which I love The Office. And then the next person said, girl, me too, wrong too. But it just isn't for some people to understand. The next person, truth. Okay. Oh, and I'm not even showing you that slide. Sorry. Sorry. There you go. Uh, here's the rest of it. I saw her video. I have a box coming next week. I've heard of someone else doing this with with the DIY boxes. They fix them and send them back and I'm considering trying it with a couple items. Cool. I hope you do well. Uh, the next person said, I saw her video too, if it's who I'm thinking, but her prices for ThreadUp made absolutely no sense to me. I looked up comps and got completely different results, so I don't know how this would work. So I know exactly what this lady did. What she did is she typed in Gucci blazer and then she saw how much people were selling them for, not the gray marked out price of like $1,900. I don't pay attention to what people are selling them for because I know the vast majority of people are sending items in and they do not adjust their prices and probably why they don't sell. People know what some things are worth, right? So a Gucci blazer, 
no one's looking for a Gucci blazer for $100. They're just not because they know those Gucci blazers are worth far more. If you look up comps on eBay, it's like for four or $500. So someone might be looking in four or $500 range. And if your item is not in that range, it will not show up in the search. You have to search everything. Plus, I mean, there was only like five blazers on there and they all were not all the same size. So mine is a size 42, which is a size six in American sizing. So I think there was one other 42. I'm hoping like someone will find it, but I always start at the very top and I work my way down. I do this, crank, uh, well, I, her name is Chris Shell, but Krangle on Instagram. She taught me how to do that, right? She taught me to start at the top and work your way down, right? So it's, and it's worked. So the strategy that works pretty well. So yeah. That's probably how she was looking at it. And that's how a lot of people do it. They're like, I don't understand why you think this is going to be, you know, price at this point because this person's selling it for a hundred bucks. Cause you're looking at the wrong number, plain and simple. And I have a video about that. So is this will be in my how to thread up. <laughs> Cause why not just put it all in there? Because this is a learning tool as well. Um, I am kind of using this kind of in a way as a Q and A in a way. So let's go on to the next one. Okay. So basically what she's doing is ordering rescue boxes from them. Not a, a ton. The designer rescue boxes. I've only had two in my life. Then turning them around to send them in as a luxe box and flip for profit. I guess whatever works. Huh? I mean, why are people so bitter? I don't understand this mentality. Honestly, this sounds like a very bitter statement. You know, whatever works. Usually, people usually say that when people are doing something that they don't understand or doing something that's working better than what they're doing. Sounds a little defensive to me. The next person, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all all because thread up is slightly shady if she was an employee or if they paid her to put this up it is it is very possible no i'm not they don't pay me i am not their employee i am self-employed vandy's closet is my business <sighs> they don't pay me i pay for that box with my own money here is the receipt you cannot see <laughs> but here's my receipt I paid for this with my own money they didn't pay me I wish I really wish they would pay me because I do a lot of posting on Instagram about thread up but this is why I do it okay so in order to make an Instagram account or YouTube account be it make it interesting you have to talk about a conversation or talk about a topic that people are interested in and that not a, a lot of people are talking about, or you're talking about it in a different way. So, I mean, I've done videos on Poshmark on, did I do one on eBay? I don't know, maybe, but there's so many people talking about Poshmark and so many people talking about eBay. I don't do Amazon that it just gets lost in like the, the, the cloud of the ether of the internet. Right? So I decided there wasn't a lot of people talking about it thread up. I was doing thread up now and you know, I understood the platform. I was making pretty good money. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to make this my niche, right? I'm going to make this my specialty. I'm going to specialize in thread up, right? So I, that's what I'm doing. This is me specializing in thread up. I do sell on Poshmark. I still sell on eBay. I sell on Macari and I do like doing that too. And I'm, need to sell more on Etsy, but this is just the niche I picked and it's working for me. I get a lot of followers because there's not a lot of people talking about it. I've actually other, other YouTubers are now talking about it. Other people on Instagram are now talking about it. So, I mean, I think it's just really interesting, um, that someone thought I worked. I, I've, had, I've had this question on my DMs. Do you work for thread up? I'm like, no, I do not. I wish now for complete transparency. I have recently, uh, applied to become a thread up ambassador, which will give you some kind of perks. 
I don't know what these are because they didn't really say. Um, but they will, I would have to post one, I think it's on Instagram, one Instagram post every month, um, to be, remain in their, um, as an ambassador. But then that would, I would actually tell you that I've applied, but I have not been accepted. And in four weeks, if four weeks go by and I haven't heard anything back from them, then I haven't been accepted. That's the way that works. So I have applied, but I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'll be accepted, but if I do, I will, that will have to be stated clear in my posts. And I would, I wouldn't be deceptive like that because that would be breaking the rules of the ambassadorship program. So I just love, that's the conspiracy theory I'm talking about. It's like someone thinks I'm their employee, but I'm not. Okay. So the next person, right? Like if that's, if that's not what's going on, I'd be surprised if they don't shut this kind of thing down real quick. Shut what down? Really? Shut what down? They want you to buy their stuff. <laughs> they want you to buy their stuff. Wouldn't they see this as a quasi scam? How is it a scam? I bought the items from them with money makes it my property and if I send it to them in a Lux box and it sells to somebody because you're not selling it directly to thread up and I think that's another thing that people can get confused about now they used to do this payout system right they used to do upfront payouts and were much lower than what you can make yeah much lower than what you can make if you let them go to consignment it was like you had to do it in the first seven days. And when I really started amping up and doing it, like my first box I sent in the end of uh, June and then I sent one in in July. And I don't think they actually got processed until August. That's right, they didn't get processed until August. And so once they got processed in August, August 19th, I believe was the day they, or 18th is the day they changed their rules about that. And they stopped doing upfront payouts. So they don't pay you out anymore. And people were doing that even during that time that they did upfront payouts. They would buy something for cheap, send it back to them and get an upfront payout, which was double or triple than what they paid for it. And it became ThreadUp's property. Now ThreadUp stopped doing that because they were bleeding money and it wasn't working for them. They had all this inventory that wasn't selling right away. And so they stopped the upfront payouts. Now they do pay you quicker when they stuff gets pulled for goodie boxes, which I love and most people do. Um, also they, um, will pay you up front if they pull something for a store pool because they have, um, things in place with Macy's with JC Penney's, I think the gap now, but I'm not sure they're selling in the gap store yet. Um, and Nordstrom's, I think they have also an, uh, an arrangement with Nordstrom's as well. So those are the two ways you can get some upfront payouts, but that's the only way you can get them. Otherwise, people are going, like you and me, on ThreadUp and buying stuff from that site. They trust the site, because it's one site. It's like going shopping on Amazon. You're not shopping from one store. You're shopping from multiple resellers that send things in to Amazon. ThreadUp is the Amazon for clothing, for used clothing. Well, they take new clothing too, but Amazon doesn't take used clothing. They take new clothing. So yeah, I just think of it that way, right? And the, the fact that things are on there for a finite amount of time, right? So unlike Amazon, Amazon things are on there. You pay a storage fee. They're on there until they sell out. On ThreadUp, they're only on there for 60 or 90 days and you have 14 days to reclaim your items. If you don't, it's theirs. So um, like if they're not in on it, I would think they would put a stop to it. What do you mean in on it? It's not a scam. I think you need to educate yourself. And I'm not saying this in a, in a rude way. I just think this person needs to educate themselves on what a scam actually is, because this is not it. This is not even a good example of a scam because it's not a scam at all. I bought something legitimately. I sent it back in. I mean, there's nothing against in their terms of service. There's nothing in their sellers terms of service uh, against doing that. I read them and there's nothing like that in there. I didn't think there was anything like that in there, but I read them just in case. And there isn't anything in there saying you cannot do this. 
because that would be stupid. That would be actually stupid for that business to do that because in this business model, I paid them money, sending it back in and it sells to somebody else. They're getting a cut of that again. So they're getting paid twice for that item. The more, you know, it, it behooves them. It actually will make them far more money if I buy stuff from them, send it back in and sells for hire to some outside source. It's smart, not a scam. I don't believe in scams. Like I wouldn't be part of one. <sighs> anyway, a hundred next person, a hundred percent of this was a great. Okay. Sorry. I think I read this wrong. A hundred percent of this was a great strategy. Why would anyone tell? Okay. Why would anyone tell their followers and decrease the likelihood that they'll, they'll get a good box again and tag throw it up to alert them. Okay. So I didn't get a good box because they knew they were sending it to me. That's not why. Um, I got a good box because I got lucky, right? Um, some people have better boxes than me, I'm sure. And some people had worse boxes than me, I'm sure. I don't think I had the best box, but I certainly didn't have the worst box. I, I bet you I'm somewhere just in the middle with what other people got. Now, we don't know how they do this. We don't know how they do it. I mean, they might prepack these boxes, slap a label and ship them off and don't know who's getting what. And I think that's probably what's happening. They probably have a stack of boxes they've already prepacked and they just slap them on. And once they're sold out, they're sold out. These sold out really quickly and they all sell out really quickly. These designer boxes are sought after me posting about it. Me, uh, making a YouTube video about it will not make them sell it any faster or any slower. It just won't. So this kind of thinking is just, I don't know. It's weird. I don't understand why people think this way and in a real conspiratorial way, it's not a conspiracy. It's not a scam. It's really weird. Anyway, next slide. And okay. <clears throat> and then the next, you would think they would track what goes in and out. But my guess is they are poorly run business and don't keep track of items well. Well, I mean, they have their issues. Every company does, but what would they track? Like exactly how would they track that? Think about that for just a moment. Let's say you buy some Madewell jeans from them and it comes to you and then you send them back. How are they, how are they going to, a, how are they going to know that those are the same exact ones you bought from them? B, why would they care? Seriously, they're making money both times. You bought something from them. They make money. You tell, you send it back to them. They sell it to somebody else. They make money. This is how business works. This is just one of many business models, but it's a business model and it seems to be working for them. So, and it's working for me and it's working for a lot of people like me who send things to thread up. Clearly this woman does not understand business very well. Not everyone does. And then the next, oh, then she said now the same person again, but she's talking to somebody else. I know she's either really stupid or working for them. I am neither. I am neither working for them or really stupid. I am really smart. So, and if you go to my Instagram page, that kind of proves it. Okay. Uh, and then the next person, I was wondering too, why she would tag them in it. Why not? There's no, there's nothing. I'm not doing anything wrong. There's nothing that I did that was wrong. So I don't understand why I would have to be quiet about it or be secretive about it. I don't understand that. I don't understand their thought process as to why this is even wrong. Um, I know, right? This part of, this is part of the reason why I think she is being paid somehow to do it. Nope. I'm not being paid. I paid them $300 for that box. Therefore it became my property and then I can do with what I want. I send it back to them because I want to sell it for higher than I will get a Poshmark or eBay. It's just that simple. It really is that simple. And it's really funny what people think. Um, and then the next person, she isn't 
she isn't. She has an entire YouTube channel where she teaches people to get the best values on ThreadUp. It is just an experiment she did. Yes, and this woman is right. The box she got was a designer goodie box. It wasn't. It's a rescue box, but that's okay. That they curate for you, I believe, not a rescue. No, it was a rescue box that sold out really quickly. It was not a goodie box that is curated. I have, however, ordered a goodie box just to see how those are to do a YouTube video about it. So that's going to be coming in sometime in the future. It hasn't even been, they're still curating it for me. And then I didn't curate myself. Um, and then the next slide, where are we on here? Oh, no lost okay there we are sorry the next one uh, she makes YouTube she makes videos on YouTube about her thread up sales and she does probably make money from the YouTube videos but not from thread up she's legit yes so I used to make some videos about my sales on thread up but it was kind of a pain in the butt to do them and so I started only putting them on my Instagram channel not channel my Instagram page um, but I do make other thread up content for my YouTube channel. I am recently been monetized. And so, yeah, it's, it is in my best interest to make videos about thread up or about eBay or about Poshmark, but thread up is just the niche I chose. And that's the one I chose to really highlight on either my Instagram or my YouTube because all the other all the other platforms are kind of oversaturated with information, but this one has not a lot out there. And so I wanted to do this because I think that could be maximize my efforts the most. I could get the most followers for this specific thing rather than trying to get it for many different, um, many different platforms. I hope that made sense. Yeah, I hope that made sense. Anyway, it's just the niche I chose and that's why I talk about it so much because A, you know, my Instagram page and my YouTube did not do as well as it is right now before talking about Instagram and be I'm, I'm sorry before talking about thread up I mean I was talking about Poshmark and eBay and you know as soon as I started showing results on how I was doing on thread up more people started following me because there's such a lack of information out there and that's the truth and then the next person um, and the next person says either way why on earth would you uh, would she tell everyone her secret and tag thread up? That is just stupidity. Now that's the same person that called me stupid before. Um, and so no lady, I'm not stupid. I'm smart. Um, and then the next person says, I second that no, that person I'm smart, but you know what? That's okay. You, you don't have to do the same thing I'm doing. Um, but I wouldn't call you stupid because you're doing something that I don't do, right? People do Amazon. People make really good money on Amazon. I have no interest. I know I could make good money on Amazon. I just have no interest. It doesn't spark me any joy whatsoever. And that's why I don't do it. So I left a nine to five job that I really hate. I hated it. Just hated it. I, I was a medical biller for the last 15 years before I was doing this full time. And for two years out of the three years I've been reselling, I worked a full time job for a hospital in downtown Seattle. And it just got to the point that I was burnt out of that industry and I just didn't want to work in the industry anymore. And I hated my job. So being my own boss, I vowed to never do something that I hate just to make money because there's no reason for it. So I really enjoy sending things thread up. I enjoy talking about thread up. I enjoy making videos about thread up. I enjoy making videos in general. I enjoy, you know, interacting with people on my Instagram. I enjoy all those activities. I enjoy reselling a Poshmark and eBay. I don't necessarily enjoy always taking the pictures and listing, but I enjoy it better now that I use list perfectly. Okay. Get the picture. I'm doing the things that I enjoy because I can. So, um, of course there are things I do that aren't, aren't as enjoyable because I love the shopping the most. Let's be truthful. I know most of us do. So it's just, it's funny. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. The only time 
the one and only time I sent them stuff, they wanted to keep one thing out of all the brand new brand name clothes that were not even a year old and they were going to get they were gonna give me like a dollar something for it and then I had to pay to get my other things shipped back to me well I see this a lot on different kinds of uh, Facebook groups and like I sent them all this great stuff but was it great I mean honestly let's talk about that not disparaging this person but it it seems to me that people really aren't sending in great things or what they consider great is not the same as what Pride Up considers great, right? So I've seen people that rant and rave about things that, you know, they sent in and they accepted them, but they only wanted to give them a dollar seventy four. Well, there was a couple things wrong with those people um, with their process because A, I don't think they were upping their prices and B, I think they were sending in cheap stuff. So you're sending in stuff that's Walmart, Target, Old Navy, you know, brand name. That's very loose, right? I mean, Old Navy is brand name. It's a brand. It's a it's a brand that people recognize. That's what brand name means. It doesn't mean high end. It just means a brand, right? Gap, that's brand name. Banana Republic, that's brand name. But it's not high end. Now, you don't have to send in high end. It's just that people think that, well, I mean, you can buy this from Old Navy for like, well, I mean, Old Navy is really cheap anyway. But let's say, let's choose um, Gap, right? Some, you can buy something from Gap for like, let's say a coat for like $50. People send in that coat that's new tag for $50 and expecting to get $40 out of it. This is why they have a sliding scale because it didn't sell for that much, right? So ThreadUp's gonna take the majority of the uh, of the money for things that are not very high value, right? That's why I try to do $100 or more original retail value because I want to maximize as much profit earning as I can. And I think if I'm making 20, 30, 40, $50 an item, I'm doing pretty good. Most of my items I do get from the bins. I do a lot of bin shopping. I mean, not recently because heh, we're in lockdown, but normally I do a lot of bin shopping. I do a lot of thrift shopping. Like, uh, at, there's a thrift store that's near me that has dollar Sundays. I'm going to go and snack clothes from there. I paid a dollar. I pox them up. I send them in the thread up and I make $20 on each item. I mean, that's a really good turnaround for no work. This is a good platform if you understand what you're doing. And that's the thing. A lot of people don't get what they're doing. A lot of people are doing it wrong and then they blame thread up. But honestly, they did it wrong. They sent in bad low end items or even I've seen other YouTubers talking about, oh, I sent in anthropology and J crew and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and I got like, you know, five, four dollars for this item. And it's like, but how low did you drop your prices? See, here's also another caveat is that I don't drop my prices so low that I'm making nothing on these items. I go down to a certain point. Like I want to make 30, I drop it down to like $60 and I make $22 and 33 cents an item provided they didn't use a coupon code. And sometimes that happens and I make less, but it's still okay. I don't worry about it. I, it, it you make it up in the end, right? So, but if I can't get these items to sell at 70 or $60 the first time, you know what I do? I reclaim them. If you reclaim 35 items, it's $6 and 58 cents means it's 18 cents per item. If I reclaim one item five times, I've added $1 onto my dollar cog. Now my cog goes from $1 to two. I don't mind that. That's okay. I, it's not very often that I've claimed things five times. I'm not even sure if I claimed any one thing five times yet. So I send it back in and then it sells for full price. I put my prices up at the top for a reason. And you know, that search, the, how people search on ThreadUp is part of it. Anyway, so, and the next person, me too. ThreadUp is a ripoff for sellers. No, it's not. It's only a ripoff if you did it wrong. You just ripped yourself off. They didn't do it. You did it to yourself by not understanding the platform and not putting in the time and effort that it takes to understand the platform. I mean, it's not that easy to pick up. I do agree to that. It's not an easy platform. But once you understand it, it's not a hard platform. 
I hope that makes any sense. And then the next person, thank you. I love her, meaning me. ThreadUp is a very up and coming platform. I mean, it's been around for like 17 years, but I think it's getting more recognition. I think she's right. Reseller, to be for to use as a reseller, in my opinion. But it does take a lot of research and strategy, and some people just don't want to have, don't want to have to do that, which is fine. She's right. There's a lot of people that just won't put in that kind of effort. Amazon requires that kind of effort too. You have to do a lot of strategy, a lot of research to really send in the right items to Amazon. So this is also the same thing is true for ThreadUp. You have to be smart and strategic about what you're doing. Um, I mean, to a point, I mean, I box things up. I buy things at very low cost. I mean, with the exception of this box, I bought everything was like literally $20 a piece. Um, but I, I know I'm going to make more than $20 a piece back. That's the thing. I'm going to make way more than $20. Even if I have to sell it myself, I will make more than $20. But I don't think I will have to. I really think this will sell really well in ThreadUp. And, um, I mean, I'm happy if everything sells for $100 a piece. Or on average. If you, you know, if you averaged out and that everything basically sold for $100 a piece. That's a huge profit margin. From $20 to $100. It's an $80 profit margin. If I can profit that much on, well, if I could profit $100 on each item, that'd be fantastic. And I would consider that a major win. And anyone that looks at that and says it's not a win, that's just weird. So yeah. Um, and then she put up some uh, persons like Thrift Hall. I don't know whose that is. I don't think that's mine. No, I think it's somebody else's. Maybe it's hers, I don't know. I had to click on it. I didn't click on the link. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Um, okay. So why would somebody give away their secret away to potentially have the whole thing shut down if they didn't work for the company? And we're just trying to get you to buy the resale boxes. That's not the point of me. I'm not just trying to get you to buy the resale boxes. I'm showing what I did because a lot of people do that. There's a lot of YouTubers that show what they got in their box. It's just what we do. It's content people like, and that's why we make it. So, um, and it garners a lot of views. So why not? It's fun for us. It's fun for view our viewers. So that's why we do it. Um, and I don't understand this mentality about things getting shut down. What exactly, why exactly do you think it's getting shut down? It's not. They know people do this. This is not a new thing. And I just, I don't understand why people are weird about people giving away information or sharing information about their experience with a company. People do that with Poshmark. People do that with eBay. People do that with Macari. And, and they, and those people get flat back too, but I don't understand why. There is room for all of us. Not all of us pick up the same items. The same items are not available to all of us, right? Um, just because I sell a Chico's coat and they bought it and someone bought it for $80 and I make 40 bucks, which is fantastic. It was in my Instagram feed. You can go check that out. Um, you know, it's like, and if somebody in another state picks up that same coat, if, even if a hundred different resellers pick up another coat and send it in, in there, there's obviously a following for Chico's because it sells pretty well. And those shoppers are shopping on ThreadUp. Not all the same. Not I shop on ThreadUp, but just because I'm shopping there um, doesn't mean the people that are shopping there are shopping other places. So uh, they ha they're the largest online consignment. So they have the largest audience for that, for this genre, because they're the biggest one. The real real is out there, but they they deal in a little bit higher end stuff. Like they don't buy lower end stuff, and they are super picky. Um, so I don't really do the real real, and I have ordered a bag, but it hasn't got to me yet. So I just wanted to try it to see, and then document my experience. <sighs> but the next person is the person who said they love me earlier, because she is providing amazing content and getting paid to do so by YouTube. That is true. When I make a YouTube video, I am now getting paid for people to watch it. I wasn't before, but I am now. Um, it will not shut down if resellers move to that platform. They make they make a percentage of every single sale. She's right. 
the more people the the more people earning credits the more money being spent throughout their website to each their own i like to diversify my income absolutely like seriously diversify 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 there is something to be said about when a platform crashes and that's your only platform and your only way to make income because you put all your eggs in that one basket now a lot of people do a lot of people put their eggs in one basket and if that's truly what you want to do great but i don't think that's that smart i think it's much smarter to spread yourself across many different platforms so i list on poshmark i list on uh, ebay and i list on macari every single item that i list goes on those three platforms 100 percent of the time now some of the my men stuff goes on grailed as well if they have the designer in their index if it doesn't then i don't list it there um but m most of them most of the well-known ones are there the some of the more obscure ones aren't and that's okay um but and grailed is another platform but they only deal with men's so i mean yeah and the, okay here's the next one I think you're missing what I'm saying. I don't think that she is just an average reseller. I think that she's being paid by ThreadUp to post this stuff. No, I'm not. I wish. I really wish. Go ahead, ThreadUp. Pay me for my posts, please. They don't, though. Uh, in hopes that they can uh, they can offload it and know that none of the stuff will be accepted into the Lux line. Okay. This person does not understand how this works. They just don't. I mean, it's apparent by what they're saying. Um, I don't, I, I honestly don't know what she's trying to get at. I mean, is she trying to insinuate that I'm being paid by throat up to talk about the stuff that I'm getting from them and sending back to them just so they can deny people? What? That makes no sense. I mean, I can't even follow her logic on this because there is, I mean, the logic is not very good it's just not good logic and I, that's why it's hard to follow it so yeah i don't know where she's going with that and it, yeah she just doesn't understand this platform hmm interesting i'm not saying you're wrong but i really don't think so i'm experimenting with the platform myself and i'll be posting sales on my instagram page at blah 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 if you would like to if you'd like to kind of monitor and see how others are doing doing with it I mean, yeah, I mean, offer proof. That's what I do. That's why I post it on my Instagram page. I'm offering you proof as to how well I'm doing because here are my sales and that's what I post them. I post them because I'm trying to prove to others that you really can make money on this platform and that I don't think only five people can send my, send things to them. They have a lot of shoppers and it's like, it's odd that people think there's a finite amount of shoppers and that so only like a few sellers can really do well and the rest of them won't do well. You will do well if you are consistent. And if like any other platform, consistency is always key, 100%. And then if you like, like uh, the shoe people that um, I recently bought shoes from, uh, Ryan and Lindsay, you know who they are, uh, they say, if you have something that's working pour pour gas on it and they're right so this was working for me so i poured gas on it and lit that on fire uh and it's working quite well thank you so uh and then someone's like what is your posh name and uh hopefully i didn't miss rejecting that uh wouldn't surprise me in the least after all uh influencers Hey, thanks. You always th you think I'm an influencer already? I mean, I'm not even at 10K and you already think I'm an influencer? <gasps> thanks. Uh, always get the good stuff in those subscription boxes. It's not a subscription box. I literally got one, tried to order a second one, and they were already sold out. Survival of the fittest for those. Uh, they get paid to love everything and encourage people to send their, their good stuff they send their good stuff for a huge profit. Um, I do encourage people to send their stuff for a huge profit because they will. 
So the people who follow me, who actually follow my advice, who actually implement the things I do, make money. They do. I have people that will come in my DMs and they're like, thank you so much. I'm so glad I, I found you. I understand what I was doing wrong before and now I'm making money on ThreadUp. People thank me almost daily, almost daily. So don't come in here telling me that I'm lying to people because I'm not. I filmed my box. I didn't love everything because I hated it. I think those are good items. That's my true opinion. I don't have I, I don't have any affiliation with ThreadUp. And, and here's one thing. If you've been following me for any length of time, you will know that I don't get any of the perks that people are getting. I don't have the reward program on my thread up. There's a reward program that not everyone's in and I'm not in. I have complained about it a few times. I complained about it and I got it up to a supervisor and I got it up to a management. Basically, I have to wait. Yeah, I have to wait for this to come to me. So one day I'll get the rewards program. I do not get any bonuses when I send in any brands. Some people get bonuses when they send in specific brands that they're asking for. I don't get any. I send in those brands, but I don't get any bonuses for those. I asked about it and they say, it's based on your usage. Okay, well I buy things from ThreadUp. I send things into ThreadUp, a lot of things into ThreadUp all the time. Um, and I, and I refer people to ThreadUp. Like people use my referral code, I get $10, they get $10 to spend and credit when they send in their goodie box, or not goodie box, but into their bag, you know, their cleanup bag. Or a label that they downloaded and then send it on a box and whatever. So I didn't like fake love these items. I really like them. So I don't understand it. Did you watch my video? This person who's at that comment, did you? Because I don't think you did. I think you're just extrapolating some BS right there. I mean, I do know what you're talking about, but a lot of people that I watch that are influencers, they're really like upfront about it. You can tell who's being fake. So, and some people just don't trust anything. And if you're that mistrusting of everybody around you, that's a you problem, 100% a you problem, not a me problem. Your misjudgment, have, you have some work to do. I suggest you do it. Um, if you think that they won't somehow keep track of their stuff, they say, okay, hold on. I'm not reading that right. You think that they would somehow keep track of the stuff they send you. How? Exactly how? I mean, they would have to like radio tag their, the items, but why would they do that? Why? They profit twice. You are missing it. You are missing the point of this. Uh, to me, Play-Dohs and ThreadUp is one of the last resorts for moving inventory. Play-Dohs, yes, I agree. There are people that make you know money off of Play-Dohs Closet that show the receipts, and I can make far more than they can on Play on ThreadUp versus Play-Dohs Closet. However, they're getting like four dollars for Forever some Forever Twenty One stuff, so it might be worth it if you're finding a lot of Forever Twenty One at the bins and you can get it really cheap. Mine is eighty nine cents a pound. If I get over a hundred pounds, I always do. When the bins are open, I always get over a hundred pounds, so I'm always paying, you know, the eighty nine cents a pound. Um, and if I find enough cute Forever Twenty One or you know H and M or stuff like that. I will lot that up and I will take it down to Plato's Closet and I will make way more money than I would anywhere else. Um, I, faster money at least. Not way more, but maybe faster money. However, majority of the things I find at my bins are like workwear and stuff like that that I can just send in the thread up and they send, they'll sell, they'll sell it and I make $20 or $30 or $40 or $50 or $160 on an item. Yeah, I've gotten dresses from the bins that I sold for 200 on ThreadUp and they gave me $160. Not because I'm an influencer, not because they know who I am. They don't know, they do not know who I am. But because I went and got an item, I sent it to them, which is their whole platform, and they sold it. I don't understand the problem here. Uh, if she could have sold those bags for five times, what ThreadUp would give her, why would she send it back? <sighs> Again, we don't know when these things were pulled, if they were on their, their website recently. Um, they, 
have so much they have to list for the people that are sending themselves i don't think they're sent i don't think they're listing the stuff that they own right they do on ebay they have an ebay store and maybe they tried on ebay for a little while and no one bit no one was biting and so they put in these boxes i'm pretty sure the reason why they do these boxes and it's a rescue box not a goodie box let's make that clear again this was a rescue box i think the reason why they do these is they need to clear out space in their warehouses it makes a lot of sense you know they have a finite amount of space a building is a finite amount of space they get a lot of people sending them stuff all the time like hundreds and hundreds of boxes every month from all over the country I, my all mine go to arizona because i'm here in washington state you know arizona probably services washington oregon nevada um arizona and probably a lot of california so that's a lot of people that they're servicing in you know in those states and they might also take montana i don't know but i know they have um georgia has one and, P and pennsylvania but I, that's the only places i know where they have um outside of that i don't know where else they have uh, warehouses i think they have like five or six but i don't know where else they are at anyway <sighs> okay back to this okay next slide and the next person saying exactly to the last person saying if they could sell it they would have not true uh she creates and the next person she creates content that makes money everyone sometimes watches on youtube video of hers okay so it's to her benefit to create content that draws viewers you are correct the more viewers the more money from youtube absolutely now it's not just from viewing it you actually have to watch the ads so you have to watch the ads for 30 seconds for your that that youtuber con a creator to get the money from AdSense um, and it's from Google AdSense so if you have a red membership to I have YouTube red myself because I don't want the ads um, then they get a portion they get a small amount of money per I, I don't know I don't know the, the um, how long you need to watch the video for that to kick in but um, they automatically I think get a port get a part of I don't think it's your membership you know I honestly don't understand how that works I know it's a lower amount but it's a steady amount it's the same amount per person that has YouTube red and everyone that's on YouTube that is monetized has to accept red red tube red like it's part of the agreement um, I don't think it was at first but now it is which I don't mind you know it's fine with me I'm happy to be monetized I'm so excited to be monetized anyway so um, and then have you already gotten the credit from your puzzles? Oh, okay. Yeah. And this goes back into, this all started with puzzles, I guess. Um, well, she was talking about puzzles earlier. I guess if you send puzzles and I think you can get some from the dollar store and you send them in, they're giving you $5 credit per puzzle. I don't know what it's all about. I haven't really checked into it much. I'm just doing this video now. I'll check into that later. So next slide. Okay okay so uh, okay this is where someone breaks it down thank you for breaking it down okay so I'll break this down for everybody so this makes more sense I use the same I use this same youtubers exact method the way we the way we do thread up is send in better items yes she's right the thread up prices prices them pretty low absolutely they price them about 80% underneath what retail the estimated retail is uh we go in and change the prices to the highest possible that we can absolutely on every single item no matter if it seems ridiculous or not then we wait for them to sell yeah i wait a little while and they will drop my prices later on but i do try to wait 14 days to 30 days if it's like they got if it was given a 60 day window i try to wait 14 days if it was given a 90 day window i try to wait 30 days before i drop my prices but sometimes i drop them early and um and then sell right away or i drop them early and then i put them back up to the top somewhere time sometimes in the middle and then drop them later on so i mean you can go back and forth it's not one way it's not one direction so doing this with these boxes makes a ton of sense thank you say those prada shoes because i got some prada shoes they will value they will value them my them at like 750 bucks right but mark them for sale price at about 150 bucks. So she will go in and double that price so they sell for more, netting her 80% profit. I will put them as high as I possibly can and then drop them from there. 
And there's a reason I do that because it garner likes. It gets a bunch of likes. Um, people may not buy it for a full price, but some of my, you never know. But people may not buy it for full price, but they're gonna like your item because they're gonna wait for it to start dropping because then they were like, okay, maybe I'll buy them if they drop to this X price, you know? There's, there's reasons behind this. So doing this with these, okay, I already read that, sorry. Uh, I sold the dress recently for $198, good for you, that I literally couldn't give away on Posh for $20 recently. Yeah, that seems to be stories I hear all the time. It's a wonderful platform if you work it. She's right. It is a wonderful platform if you know what you're doing. Okay, and then the next person. Exactly. It takes strategy, and that's why everyone is not doing it. But I can indeed, but it can indeed be done. And then the next person, wow, thank you for the breakdown. I agree it takes strategy, and that's why when I saw this last night, my mind went wild thinking of possibilities. Like I said, I don't know a thing about higher-end item, and you don't need to know a thing about higher-end items, which is why I would be scared to try this otherwise. So honestly, if you're getting stuff from like a thrift store for relatively, really cheap, um, send them in. Look them up, look them up first. So if you look at my YouTube videos, um, you can see in my how to thread up, which this is going to go into that same one because it's educational at the same time as replying to these people in this group. But, um, if you look at that, I made a video of exactly how I look on thread up to exactly determine whether or not I'm going to sell it on Poshmark, sell it on eBay or send it to thread up. I end up, I end up listing those cheaper stuff. The stuff that doesn't sell for as much, I list that because I can get more money for that item if I just do the work myself. I hope that makes sense. Then if I were to send it to them, I send them my higher end items because they can garner more money for those items. And when I say higher end, I'm not talking about Prada or Gucci. I don't find that stuff that often. I'm talking about Ann Taylor, Loft, Banana Republic, you know, those kinds of things. Okay, I think we need to go to the next one. Oh, I don't think I read this all the way. Sorry. Like I said, I, oh no, I did. Never mind. I did read it. Oops, sorry. Okay, next one. Okay, it's a massive gamble for sure. Eh, I don't think it's a massive gamble, but okay. I have zero issues dropping hundreds, possibly thousands of dollars on inventory, but I still won't buy one of these because of the risk. Oh, I see what she's saying. Yeah, it's a gamble to get these boxes. I thought she meant it was a gamble to send it in. It's not. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a gamble, but I'm willing to take that risk. I knew I would get my $300 back. I mean, at the very least, I don't, I, I, I still haven't seen a video where it was trash. I mean, I haven't. The people that I have made videos, I haven't seen that many on Instagram. I've been watching the ones on YouTube. The ones on YouTube that I watch, they will make their money back and, and they'll make a profit. So I don't understand. Sometimes you need to risk some things, but you know, it is the same realm as mystery boxes. Although I think mystery boxes honestly are more risky than these rescue boxes, to be perfectly honest. In my opinion, uh, my, in my experience and my experience of watching other people, like, um, there are other creators that get these boxes, not this exact box, but usually get the DIY designer box very often. And, or they order a lot of them at the same time and then they dole them out over a couple weeks. Um, and they, and they always make their money. So, you know, take that how you will. Anyway, so I have had a really lukewarm experience uh, as a buyer on Thread Up, so I wouldn't personally trust it. Well, it really depends on how well versed you are in the brands you're sending in, I think. So here's a tip. When you're buying things off Thread Up, I buy things that are not uh, final sale and that I can return. I don't get mad if it's a little bit different than it was described. I look it over and if it's, you know, as described, I keep it. And if it's not as described, I send it back. I mean, that's just the way it goes. So I don't think it's that big of a risk, honestly, to buy things in that format. Now the rescue boxes, you can't return. So they're, they're final sale, but like the normal items, they're not final sale and they will refund you. Um, if you get an item that is not, they have a return policy. So, I mean, there is that. So just keep it, 
just pay attention when you're when you're looking for things on thread up and you know what brands you're looking for and you'll know what items you're looking for and you know you're gonna have to do some research you know don't DM me and ask me for that because I'm not gonna be able to give you that information you're gonna have to do that research yourself um, but as a seller I have had weeks where I make over 500 in there yeah me too I've had those weeks um, it's a great pl platform once you manipulate it absolutely and you don't have to manipulate it you just have to use it as they intend you to they want you to raise your prices because the more you make the more they make it makes sense right uh, so so worth it to try okay so worth it to try with high-end items that just sit on posh question mark yes I have gorgeous men cashmere coat but not men's uh, that has been sitting for nine months now. It's worth at least 1200 retail, maybe more. Um, sorry, you can't send that to thread up because they don't accept men's, but you can send that to the real real. Although there's a, there's a, um, a real risk with that one because they drop their prices aggressively. And I've heard, and I've seen a lot of like negative things like that, but I have ordered my own bag. So I am going to try out the real real because I want my own experience with it because I don't like basing all my experience all my um, understanding about something off of other people's experiences because I tend to look at things way differently than other people I just do I have that kind of I have that kind of out-of-the-box thought process and that people don't generally have so yeah uh, next reel or next slide okay I feel like that it I feel like it's kind of wrong why why is it wrong? But I mean, whatever works, I guess. I would rather list on Poshmark, though, because you never know what you're going to get from ThreadUp. I don't know. I'm scared to try rescue boxes because they can be a bunch of crap sometimes. Yeah, they can be. But I, I have yet to buy a rescue box that I didn't make a profit on. Yet. That I'm pretty sure. I actually am going to go back and start. I'm going to go back and look through those. Because I think I did a haul and every single rescue box I've done. Um, so I do intend to do follow-up uh, videos on that. So that would be pretty interesting. Okay. So then the, the person's asking, curious, what, what part you think is wrong? And then she's like, I'm not really saying it is. I just don't know how I would feel about buying a box from a company, repacking it, and sending it right back to them to rebuy for me for a prof to profit from it. They don't buy it from you. Like I said before, unless they pull it for a goodie box and it's going to a customer, or they pull it for a store pull, which those haven't those have been happening, but not that often because or not as often as they were because a lot of their stores are closed because they're in California. But they are pulling things for like J.C. Penney's and Macy's and Nordstrom's and so and maybe the Gap too. I know the Gap is giving you bags, but I'm not sure if they're putting used items in their clothes in their store yet. So I'm not sure about that. Um, but outside of those two scenarios, they're not buying them from you. They are selling it for you to another person. So it's not like I'm pulling one over on them at all just think that's so weird that 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 thing that thought process is just odd um and then sh someone's saying i see that that company is terrible and makes millions off of people so i don't mind well yeah they make millions off of people but people are making money off of them too so it's a mutual beneficial relationship right so um the people that don't understand how to use a platform they're not taking advantage of those people those people should just be better at their research, honestly. Um, I mean, and there is a lot of misinformation out there, and I do understand that. And so that's another reason why I try to put this information out there to try to help other resellers make more money. That's my point. My point is to help resellers. That's it. Um, oh, and be monetized because that's a nice kickback from helping people become more successful and throw it up. I now am monetized on, on YouTube. So the more, you know, content I make for YouTube, the more money I'm going to paid from them. And so it's a mutual beneficial thing now. Uh, anyway, so true. I source from them sometimes, but they are hard to get stuff low enough to profit from. Not true. So you have to know what you're looking for. You have to know what you're buying. So there are plenty of people I know that buy things off of ThreadUp all the time. 
they buy nice dresses they send them right back and they make three or four hundred dollars off the 25 to 50 dollar investment they made that's a really nice profit and thread ups making a profit off that too so they made money off the fifty dollars or the 25 or fifty dollars for the dress originally then you send it back to them and then it sells for three or four hundred dollars to Jane I don't know some lady named Jane and then it goes to her she keeps it she doesn't return it and you get that money thread up gets the difference so thread up one twice okay so uh, I've never seen anything with too much value into them for, uh, I never send anything with them too much value to, for fear of losing lots of money. How would you lose lots of money? You control your pricing. It's not like the real real. The real real is where you lose lots of money because they control the pricing. You control all the pricing. Now let's uh be clear they do mess up sometimes so they do mess up and they'll mark a luxe item for like 30 dollars. it has happened i've seen it happen to people uh but that's not it's rare it happens rarely they do make mistakes and if you're looking for a company that has not made any mistakes you're never gonna find one that just they don't exist all companies make mistakes because you know why they're all run by humans all humans make mistakes yes all of us do Okay, so, and then the next person, their stuff is so overpriced, but people are buying it. So, yeah, I don't care. I mean, people are buying it. I'm happy with that. Buy my stuff. And then someone's like, for sure. And when you send them stuff, they give you pennies for it. Only if you're sending them bad things and you don't understand to raise your prices. If you're sending them things that are just low, they retail low originally, they're not going to give you much money and that's so true so you got to be smarter about what you're sending in that's just the honest truth if you're not if you're not smart about what you're sending in you're gonna you're not gonna make that much and it's not because the platform was bad it's just your understanding of the platform was bad let's own our own stuff shall we okay so I had a few items sell prior to me adjusting the price as I never got the notification my Lux items were going live. Yeah, that is a problem that they have. I don't trust their email system. And so I check the app twice a day, every day to make sure. Cause now you have a 12 hour window. I don't like it. I wish it was 24, but it's a 12 hour window. So it's 12 hours before it goes to bidding. And then after bidding, it goes unavailable again, but you can adjust your prices and then it goes to consignment. Um, I don't like that part of it for sure, but you know what? You have to take the good with the bad. So if I want to profit off this company, if I want to profit off this platform, then I have to deal with some of the things I don't tend to like about them but you know nonetheless no platform has stuff that I like 100% not one there's I don't like 100% of what Poshmark does I don't like 100% of what Macari does I don't like 100% of what eBay does I just don't but I like enough of their platform that I want to sell on their platform I hope that makes sense okay um, all were Lux brands bought locally you should be spreading that out to multiple boxes, not just one big box, honestly. Uh, most of my items haven't sold and the time is running out. I'll reclaim them and try again when the mark market gets a little better. It's not that the market isn't better. It's that your strategy for how you sent them in wasn't that great. So what you should do is if you had a box, let's say you had a box of like 30 items, they were all Lux items. I would pack those up into like at, at le least five or a little like uh, three to five items in each Lux box and then fill them up with other items because it doesn't have to all be Lux. Um, now I, I was sending in for a long time one and now I've actually been sending in two to three every time Lux items with my Lux boxes um, because some people have been um, told that they can't get any more Lux labels and I don't really want to learn the hard way that I'm not sending in enough. So. Um, but I also send them in pretty good items with that. They may not be on their Lux list, but they're they're good items. I send them in cocktail dresses that I find like at Value Village, or I'm sending them stuff that I find at the bins, but it's in good repair. Like, you know, Eileen Fisher's good. I do Banana Republic. Um, Ann Taylor is really good on that platform. Workwear is really good on that platform. It gets pulled a lot for their goodie boxes. So, I mean, once you understand what you're doing, you can do better. Um, 
but you can't do better if you're just going to judge something and not put any time or effort into learning about it, following people who are doing better than you at it. You get what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, I definitely reclaim and resend. Absolutely. It's a great, it's a good thing to do. Uh, get it back from them and send it right back to them. Exactly. For the luxury items, it takes about two to three days for the process to, for them to process and authenticate ish. I just watch them right before it goes live and they send you a email. So watch out for that. Yeah, it does take a little longer, a little bit longer for Lux, uh, for the Lux boxes. And I hate to call them Lux boxes, but for the items you sent in via a Lux label to process, uh, the standard label, those items tend to, tend to process a bit faster because they're not luxury and no authentication is required for those. Uh, looks like she's buying at a, a rather, she looks like she's buying in rather high. And then someone re, uh, replied with, it's a $300 box. I pay $20 an item. So I don't think that's too high on these particular items. Um, I don't buy $20 items normally. Normally I pay under a dollar or a dollar for my items. So I have a lot of inventory right now. I have about 700 items on, um, on file with them. And I have 15 boxes that they have not processed. I have anywhere from 30 to 45 items each box. So, and I, I, some, cause some of those boxes were pretty, were a little lighter stuff, like, you know, lighter, like, um, they weren't heavy coats or whatnot. So I can pack more into a box. Okay. If you look up thread up calculator, Oh, I hate this comment. Okay. The thread up comp, uh, the thread up calculator is garbage. Never use it. Don't ever use that calculator. It's garbage. You know why it's garbage? It's because it's based on if you send in your items and you don't adjust your prices, that's how much they think you're going to make. That calculator is garbage. So don't, don't pay attention to it. You can see what other sellers got for similar items. I would 10,000% recommend doing this before sending anything in. So you know what it would be priced at. No, you actually won't. That is a lie. You will not know what it's priced at via that calculator. They're not showing you how they're going to price it. They're showing you what you're going to make. If you send in a box with that brand and you don't adjust your prices. And if you do that, that's stupid. Adjust your prices after they process it, adjust them up max. Uh, the good thing is though, that is that you can change the prices of your items and you can get your items back through, back through Lux only. Not true. You just need to ha have at least two designer items in it. Um, so this is a confu a common confusion about the Lux Lux label versus the uh, regular standard label. So the standard label, you can pay the 1099 to, and it's called the return assurance and the Lux label has return assurance built into it. And so that's what she's talking about, but it is free on the Lux, but you do have to add a, a couple of Lux items. I add two to three now, um, each one. And I have built up a, a, a collection of Lux items through eBay, uh, through Poshmark, through the real real, but be careful with the real real because they don't always have the same, um, they don't always have a label and that's a no, it's a, it's a no go for sending it to thread up. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's a common misconception. You can get your stuff back. You just have to pay the 1099 on the standard label. I still use labels and I pay the 1099 every time because it's worth it. It's a hundred percent worth it to get your items back because sometimes they reject things for no good reason. I send it back and they accept it the next time and I do nothing to it. So, and that happens to a lot of us. Um, you just need to have at least, okay, two designer items. Okay. Next slide. Okay. She isn't the only one there have to be other, there have been others doing this for years. Laugh out loud, laughing my ass off because she says she's the only seller she knows of that does it. Do you know if it truly works and makes a profit? Then the next person said, I think she meant that she own that she's the only one buying the designer rescue box and then sending it back in. Yes, that's exactly what I meant by my post. Now, when I made that post on my Instagram, I realized that could be taken two ways. And then I put an edit in there and I said, this is what I really mean. I meant this, this specific box. I'm the only one I know that bought one of these $300 designer 
boxes from thread up and that is just going to pack it back up and send it off now a couple people reached out to me when i made that post and they're like hey or they said in my post oh yeah i'm thinking about doing the same thing great you know because that creates a conversation as well um i'm not saying i'm the only reseller out there that buys from thread up and sends it in i'm not i know i'm not i know other people that do that but i'm just saying this specific box i was the only one that i knew of at the time that was actually doing that. I packed up 14 of the 15 items, not the long chomp bag because I think it's fake, but 14 of the 15 items I put in a Lux box with some other items and I sent it back. Gucci, Prada, they're both on the Lux list. Um, and there was a few more that was in there. I think we're all on the Lux list, but you know, honestly, Gucci and Prada are on that Lux list. So I knew that's all I needed to put in there for Lux items. Um, but I actually think there was a few more that were on that list. Anyway, they're going to make me more money than anywhere else. So that's why I'm sending it in. Okay. Next one. Um, in your post, you mentioned sending in puzzles through thread up. Oh yeah. And then we get to the puzzle part. I printed a puzzle label. I sent them an email about the minimum number of pieces required for each box. No response. What's the size puzzles you send? I just sent in kids puzzles from Dollar Tree. They, were, they weren't over 50 pieces each. They didn't specify what they were looking for, so I only spent $11 to see how it goes. Good to know. Uh, thanks. Maybe someone will be mad that I'm putting this on my video. I don't care. Uh, that's what I'll be doing too. That's what I'll be doing too. I'll be checking into that. Yeah, I'm always willing to take the risk, but I'll test the waters with my $11, laugh out loud. Puzzles? What's the deal with puzzles, someone says. And then she puts in um, like the thing that's on the app about the puzzles. And so you can check that out. They're giving you, oh, maybe I should go to the next slide. So you can also see that. Uh, it's really tiny though. Uh, they are giving you a $5 credit for every box of puzzles you mail in. Good to know. So I'll be doing that as well. Um, and so I suggest you do it as well. Let me rack up the credits. Why not? Because then you can buy things with it. Uh, okay, so thread up pays very little. I wouldn't imagine they would actually pay that much. True, a different person is looking through the box. So like, so likely they will take all the items assuming they are new and fresh and not rejected stuff that they already sold. What? Um, new and fresh. I love people's like, descriptions. This item is new and fresh and never been sold by thread up. They don't care. They honestly don't care. Um, but likely, but they likely, could they actually pay much more than it costs, it's not written well, uh, you buy, cost you to buy and it seems slim. <laughs> okay, hope you got that. I can see how this could work, but it's a gamble and in all likelihood, I would imagine you wouldn't actually make much. Watch me. Follow my Instagram. Watch me. I wouldn't, wouldn't you gross more selling it yourself on Poshmark if you're going to invest in it anyway? Watch my video. I comp it on Poshmark, on eBay, and then I pit it up against ThreadUp. Watch my Instagram because that's where I put my ThreadUp solds. So I will be talking about this. And I am going to do a 30-day, a 60-day, and a 90-day video. It's not a risk because I'll tell you why. I'm not gonna lose my items because I will reclaim them. If it, they don't sell on that and it didn't work out, then it didn't work out. I'm okay with that. And then I'll try to sell them myself. I didn't lose my items. You know, I will still own, retain the ownership of my items. When you send things to thread up, it's not their items. It is still yours unless you don't reclaim and then it is their property. Get what I'm saying? Uh, and then someone says, you can adjust your prices. Yeah, people don't get that. You just need to know what to send in. I make more on ThreadUp for certain items than I do on Poshmark. She's right. And then I'll show you a picture of the dress next that she put in here. It's a screenshot. Uh, I guess for I guess for items like this, they attract clientele that might be wary of Poshmark, since in so e people's eyes, ThreadUp it up ThreadUp is an actual store, and we are more like eBay. Okay. I have some higher end brands that aren't moving in my closet because it's mixed in with lower end stuff too. That's not why it's not selling. Uh, with Lux, you, do you have to pay to get the stuff they reject back? No. Uh, it's a, it, 
it's a long wait wait period for a payout too right yep right now it's 45 days but it's worth it's worth the wait in my opinion um i my 45 day my lag was all of april i made i only made a couple hundred dollars off of thread up in april because of when they changed the policy but i kept sending stuff in like i i didn't do send things in for like a week and then i thought you know what i'm just gonna send things in they didn't look like they're shutting down i'm just gonna send things in um and so now may and june i'm set up really nicely to make more money i'm like i have future money as long as those those things don't get returned i'm making some good money on may and june so i'm really excited i get um blah 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 is long wait proof to yep and then they have a luxe sheet of brands they take too right yes they do it's 600 brands they have you can download it to your phone i highly suggest you do that i have it downloaded to my phone as a pdf so if i'm in a store or i'm at the bins and my reception isn't good i can still see those and not have to rely on a website so the next item is that dress so she sold this dress. It was Diane von Furstenberg cocktail dress. She sold it for $198. Uh, they likely valued this dress at like four or $500. Um, and I, cause I don't know if she sold it for max price, but she got 90%. So I don't know. Now the max for most people is 80%. I don't know if this is before they changed it back in August or, and she said recently. So I don't, I think she probably had some kind of bonus. So they probably are running a bonus on Diane von Furstenberg, where they're probably giving you 15%, but their max they will give you is 90% payout. So she probably maxed out because she sold it for $200. She got 90% because she's probably getting a bonus. I don't get those bonuses. I wish I used to, and then they took them away from me back in October. So, um, I don't know if I'll ever get those back, but you know, I still send things in because I'm making more money on ThreadUp than I am on any other platform on these items. Okay. Next screen. Okay. Okay. I guess for items like this, they attract... Oh, okay. So maybe I double copied that. Sorry. So I was going... This may sound silly, uh, but do you have to take the photos on ThreadUp? Or do they send them, or do you just send them your items? You just send them your items. Nope, you don't take photos. You just send the items, but they are very picky. No, they're not. About what they buy and pay pennies on the dollar. They don't buy it from you. They put it on consignment. Um, I, this woman's working on really old, she's working on old information that's almost a year old now. Last August, they stopped the upfront payouts, but they always had consignment. It wasn't just an upfront payout and that's it. They pay you for your item and then they try to sell it. That's not the way this works. So that you had the option, they would consign it and you had the option to take an upfront payout. And I took two things with upfront payouts because um, I literally got one bag in before they changed it and I could do that. Um, but the rest of them, I actually allowed them to go to consignment and they sold for way more than they would have given me originally. So the consignment is really the smarter part of this platform rather than the upfront payouts. There were some people that were mad about the upfront payouts being stopped, but you make more money on consignment. So it's just not as fast money because that was instant money for them. Okay. <clears throat> but you know what? Be smarter. Just be smarter about what you're giving them. Just be smarter about what you're doing and then you will be better at doing this. So this lady doesn't understand the platform. She doesn't understand what she's even talking about. And it's because she doesn't understand the platform. She hasn't been doing it. She doesn't do it. She just knows what other people telling her that are also spreading misinformation. And then the last thing, just one single comment, because this is the end of the thread. Why is she tagging thread up on her post? Won't they catch on what she's doing and change their selling tactics? No. No, they won't. They know. They're not stupid. They understand what's going on. I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, I'm doing what people do. You know, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. So, anyway. I hope you found this educational in some way. Um, I hope you understand the reason why I just chose to do respond to these this way rather than responding to them individually in that thread because I don't think it's going to be constructive to be perfectly honest. I think some of the people's some of the people in this thread are are hard headed are not willing to listen to uh, you because or literally won't listen to me because they think I'm a fraud. I'm being paid by thread up to love these items. No, I'm not. I have applied for the. Uh, 
to be an ambassador, but I am not. Not yet. Hopefully I do. And if I don't get accepted, I'm going to reapply. I mean, I'll reapply until they accept me. If they never do, then they never do. But that won't change my way I do my business because I'm making good money. And if you don't want to make good money like I am making, then that's your deal. You know, if you're making, if you feel like you're making better money on Threda, I mean on Poshmark or eBay or Macari or another platform, then good for you. I'm really happy for you. I'm honestly happy for you. Um, but this whole thread, a lot of it screams jealousy. A lot of it screams um, the people who didn't figure it out, they have to badmouth somebody that did. So I just think it's hilarious that they picked me. But whatever, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna get probably some thumbs down from this video and I'm expecting that. And I'm good with that because you know what? It still helps me. You're still helping me. Even though you're giving me a thumbs down, YouTube, use it the same. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below and subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching.